I'm setting type. This is something that went on for centuries, starting with Gutenberg in the middle of, of the 15th century. The movable letters are stored in cases. Here we have the uppercase and the lowercase letters, the capitals and the small letters. They are formed by casting, and that's accomplished through a series of steps. The cutting of a punch, the making of a matrix, the casting of the type, finishing the type, and so forth. For every letter, there had to be an original, in this case, a steel punch. The punch is driven into copper, it makes an impression in the copper, and this is then filed and made into the matrix. The matrix has to be perfected in order that it be level and ready for the mold. So we're going to go through this whole process of making a punch and striking a matrix. The first step in making the punch is to prepare the steel. A piece of steel has been cut to a length of about two and a half inches, sometimes three inches. The back end is rounded off, the front end is polished. This will become the face of the finished punch. Polishing is done on an abrasive stone, a very fine abrasive. In this case, I'm using some slate. We also have an Arkansas stone. In either case, the surface is brought to a high polish. We're going to copy a letter today. In this case, the letter R. It's actually a Garamond R. I need to put soot on the face of this uh, type here. The soot is going to be transferred to the punch. Nice even coat of soot. This is a plastic film. I now have a soot impression on this piece of plastic. So you can see that the, we got a very clean image of the letter here. This is the ones I did before. This didn't work too well. I'm going to move that onto my um, steel punch. Before I do that, I need to mark the position. punch. I have my guidelines on there, which I can see, believe it or not. There's the bottom line. And that's essential if I'm going to get this on here nice and straight. And then I rub the soot onto the steel. Today I'm using a counter punch, but I could just as easily engrave the counter. There are advantages to both methods, and in fact, both methods are employed by competent punch cutters. There's the letter right there, there's the letter. Ready to be drawn. Or in this case, we're gonna counter punch. You'll see that the, that the metal's bulged up there. Instant counter. Counter punch will do it all at one shot. I have the counter, it's completely done, except for maybe some minor touch ups. So we move along, and that means cleaning this thing up. I'll save that for another letter. I can probably make a P with that same punch. Now that I've got the counter and I've drawn the letter, I need to file away these various flats on the side here. I'll make a mark here to indicate how far back I should file. 
after I cut these large surfaces away just to get approach the letter, then I'll do the fine filing. So for now, we're just doing this very coarse work. I've begun to approach the letter. I've just done a lot of rough filing around the outside. So it's a long way to go, but I've gotten rid of the, the worst of the excess metal. So now it's a, a much finer process. So I'll be using a lot of the finer files. I'll be working under the loop almost exclusively now, and uh, we'll be developing the letter to its final shape. So what I need right now is my big square file. tend to leave the serifs long and then at the very last step I'll start adjusting the lengths of the serifs and the exact thicknesses and so on. So I'll coat the end of the punch with some soot here from our, our lamp and then we'll make an impression on a piece of paper. I've got to dampen my paper, soften it a little bit. And we'll just make an impression. I've learned it takes a little tap. And we have a very clean impression. <laughs>